welcome to the webinar. Glad so many of you could make it at such short notice. Uh, I'll begin, so I will just run you through. I am Aditya, a head of strategy at Legality. I am joined by my colleagues Nayan and Siddhant, who head our legal and business development operations. Uh, and would like to first start by thanking Pritesh Majumdar for facilitating this webinar and discussion um, and for driving us to actually host this. So thanks, Pritesh. So uh, legality, uh, I will start the webinar with a five minute introduction of legality and then Nayan will come to what we're all ultimately here for. The implications of the SEBI circular of 24th April 2020 on the onboarding process for your businesses. Legal legality is essentially a legal technology company offering e-signing and e-stamping solutions with the sole aim of removing all paper from paperwork of an organization. We are, have a core team of lawyers, graduates of the National Law School of India University, and we have also been proud to have been incubated by Cyril Amarchand Mangaldas for the last six months, working on developing legal processes and vetting the legality and legal processes surrounding our product. We've uh, been in legality for the past three years has been working with many organizations to eliminate paper-based processes from paperwork. We have been proud to power India's highest valued e-signed deal where legality was actually used as the execution platform for the Orchid Pharma insolvency resolution plan documentation in March 2020, being signed by 22 banks, public sector, private sector and foreign, with all of them signing through legality. The deal worth 1100 crores is the highest valued transaction to be e-signed in India till date. And we believe it's a sign that e-sign is ultimately the future of documentation and signing in India. Legality over the past three years has also been serving a wide variety of clientele focused across the BFSI space and non-BFSI space with clients such as Airtel Payments Bank, HDB Financial Services, WeWork, Razorpay, LNT Financial Services, Siemens Financial Services. So we have extensive experience in working with organizations on their specific document flows and digitizing the entire execution leg of documentation, eliminating the latent costs that come with paper-based flows. Uh, with that, I'll hand it over to Nayan from our legal and business development team to talk about the specific implications of the SEBI circular and how that can impact your onboarding business and how legality can actually play a role in helping you take advantage of SEBI's latest clarification. Nayan, over to you. Sure, sure. Uh, thank you so much, Aditya, for that introduction. And thank you so much to everyone for taking time out today on a Saturday and joining us for this webinar. Uh, I think just a few quick points stand that while our client list that was just shown on the previous slide, uh, it didn't particularly have a number of SEBI registered entities. However, what this current lockdown has done is that over the last one to two months, we've had numerous conversations and a very high amount of interest in digitization, e-signature uh, processes being used. And because of that, we have are currently in the process of onboarding a number of SEBI registered entities. And that cuts across the portfolio management space, wealth advisory, and now of course, uh, through mutual funds as well, is something that uh, you know we wanted to just have a discussion and see how we could help SEBI registered entities make full use of uh, the kind of steps that government bodies are now taking. Because what has happened is that government agencies have now recognized that there is a need to move towards digitization and that through the use of Aadhaar, the architecture for enabling companies to go digital and to execute their documentation to conduct their KYC is already in place. It is just a question of providing comfort to industry participants. It's a question of passing the right laws 
technologically the architecture is already in place and i think that is the recognition that we've seen come across by sebi in its clarification uh, last friday on 24th april on the kyc process where sebi pointed out a couple of very interesting things uh, on their uh, use of technology for kyc so in clause 3 of the circular sebi explicitly recognizes what has been there for many many years under the information technology act that is that uh, digital signatures are accepted in place of wet signatures under indian law and that includes aadhar e sign so that very specific recognition is there in the sebi circular what the circular then goes on to talk about is that how can aadhar e sign be used in the kyc process and in that there are two points which uh, are made in the circular one is that when it comes to the uh, officially valid documents other than aadhar be it uh, you know your driver's license voter id or so on under the prevention of money laundering act what is the list of ovds as well as your pan card and such as a signed cancel check these documents can be attested digitally attested using aadhar e sign so that is one very important step that's come about that there is now no longer a need to just uh, uh, have a hard copy or a or a color copy of the id which is then attested by hand a color scan of that id proof can also be attested by using an individual's aadhar as a form of attestation by creating that aadhar e sign the second step is that the kyc form once it has been filled in can also be attested using an investor's aadhar e sign so there are two ways to go about this one is that once the kyc form is filled in the can be a print out taken of the kyc form then it can be physically signed then it can be a scan of that can be uploaded and before sending it across and to complete the kyc formalities it can be digitally signed using aadhar the second process is that there is no printing there is no scanning but a cropped image that is an image of the handwritten signature of the investor is affixed onto the kyc form and then before sending it out and to complete the formalities such form is also digitally signed using aadhar so we've got a very important set of clarifications that sebi recognizes that aadhar e sign is accepted in lieu of wet signatures and to provide investors comfort to ensure that there is a smooth process during the current lockdown and that digitization processes are uh, smoothened out and well implemented going forward as well aadhar e sign can be used as a form of attestation as well so i think what we can talk about now is a little bit is how would this really digital flow work in your current process and how would legality fit in and help you really grow and scale your digital operations so as to ensure that something like a lockdown or any such extraordinary circumstance that we're going through would not cause any substantial or meaningful disruption to your operations that the customer onboarding process the kyc conducting process can go on as before so those are the sets of documents that we've spoken about in terms of uh, attestation of ovds signing and attesting kyc forms and separately whatever other documentations are there be it the booklet be it any form of booklet be it any other form of uh, documents that you need to be signed that can also be signed using aadhar e signature because that is also well recognized by sebi as being equivalent to wet signature and i think the thanks a lot man for that uh, great explanation on why exactly the sebi circular changes things but ultimately for a lot of stock broking organizations they have already been actually following this before the circular what the circular actually does 
is provide comfort for even investors across the spectrum and registered intermediaries across the spectrum even those for hni investors to actually go digital now why should you go digital ultimately uh, and i think that is a important question to be answered before actually moving on to what legality actually offers the reason is quite simple while paper itself may be cheap the processes around paper are definitely not uh, paper takes time for onboarding and starting your customer journeys paper itself is not as secure as a digitally stored document physical documentation has organizational hassles and paper ultimately creates friction in your otherwise digital and smooth journeys that you have with your customer in other aspects paper is an unnecessary cause of friction so that essentially is why there is value in all intermediaries considering the digital route now with the latest context of social distancing norms extending past the lockdown there will be an increased need of digital processes to maintain current flows without disruption uh, i think just to add on to what aditya just said uh, in the current physical process there is always the danger that maybe a signature required on one page out of 20 pages is missed out in the storage some page gets torn here or there uh, maybe some documents are not couriered maybe you need to again go and get more id proofs there can be a lot of back and forth in a paper based process which can be not very good for the customer experience and which can create a lag in your turnaround time and in the onboarding process that a lot of businesses may not have realized is actually completely avoidable because what can be done through digitization is that the form itself the template of the different documents that you have can be standardized only specific details will need to be filled in from time to time through just one time authentication by an investor all pages of the document can be instantly signed upon that process happening your company's signature or your authorized signatory signature can also be automatically affixed or affixed in a very smooth manner onto the document and then after that the documents can be automatically categorized and stored in your system the main benefit that digitization also offers is not just enabling you to do your business in times of crisis but it enables you to avoid manual errors to ensure smooth storage and all of these have an exponential benefit on your turnaround time and therefore on your business costs and the kind of savings that you can have in your business and also enables you to ensure that when you are considering how to efficiently use your resources in your business there is that can be that efficiency can be maximized and you can really just get the most out of your documentation and your customer onboarding process what we do is legality is that yes sorry aditya please sorry man yeah yeah uh, no no go ahead go ahead yeah so, so what we do is legality is that we offer two ways for you to conduct a digital flow we have a ready to use platform that you can just sign up for and you can immediately start using separately if you already have some sort of digital onboarding system or you have some sort of management system we will integrate with that system to provide a seamless flow for you and these are both very easy to use very seamless solutions that we offer and this i think is just a visual representation of the various kinds of processes the different kinds of you know points of mistake or points of disruption that can happen in a paper based process that you do away with and automate when it comes to going digital especially when it comes to documents that are as critical to your business as conducting the kyc kind of documentation and do, completing the kyc forms in terms of what is the kind of regulatory framework under which this is working so sebi is given the recognition but the kind of framework under which aadhaar e signatures have been happening for the last couple of years 
is very well recognized under the IT Act. The second schedule of the IT Act recognizes Aadhaar eSign, and there is a specific regulator set up by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, known as the Controller of Certifying Authorities, that has put in place very detailed reg regulations, registration processes, and thorough checks and audit processes to ensure that this Aadhaar architecture can be used to really scale and push your businesses and take it to the next level. So Legality is a registered application service provider in this process. We partner with NSDL. So as a parallel, if you were to think of NSDL as an e-signing depository, then you could perhaps look at Legality as an e-signing depository participant. And we conduct this process and we also ensure that once uh, that with every a document that is signed on our platform, there is also a detailed audit trail or a record of every single step in the process. So when did someone sign a document? When did someone uh, uh, you know, open a document? Which device did they use? All of this is recorded. So I think Nayan, we can go to the demo and actually yeah. showcase these features and how exactly they'll fit into an onboarding process. Yeah. Okay, so let's just shift on to the demo. Okay, hi. So I hope that everyone can see the screen. Uh, yes. So where I've just taken you to now is what our program dashboard looks like. So the process of sending a document out for signing is very simple. You just click on new document. Here, there can be two options. You can upload a PDF document. So the filled in KYC form can be already just uh, in PDF form can be uploaded for signing. Or there can also be a pre-saved template that will just be a standard format document with variable fields that can be used over and over again for your different signing journeys. If you want to use any sort of stamp paper, because that is a facility that we provide as well, you can procure the stamp paper through us. And all you would need to do is click on this use stamp button and choose any particular stamp paper that is required for this kind of documentation. So you've chosen the kind of document, you've chosen the stamp paper, and then whichever separate fields there are, you can fill this. So I'll just fill in some dummy numbers here. It's important to remember that everything that you can do on this dashboard, you can do through your digital onboarding system or your management system as well. <laughs> And in fact, you can, through our process, create tens, hundreds, multiple documents at once using a particular template and send that for signing simultaneously. Another important factor to note is that your customer can also fill out the template. So using a template of a KYC form, you can have the customer actually fill in the variable fields they need to fill. That's correct. Uh, what you can do then is that you've chosen the document and now you choose to whom this document will go for signing. So here, suppose I'm going to send the document to myself for signing. I've entered my name and I've entered my email ID. And I've chosen that I will conduct an Aadhaar based signing journey for this customer. So all these configurations will be conducted by you as the company. Your client or your customer will, will only get whichever choice of whichever kind of signature process that you have enabled. So you choose Aadhaar and then your customer will receive an invitation on his email for using Aadhaar to sign a document. What you can do is you can also fix the signing flow. So first your customer signs it and then you can sign the document if required. 
and that can also be automated we have various different kinds of signatures that you can use to automate the signing process from your end or the fact that a signatory at your end can also use a dsc or the usb based digital signature token to sign up to 500 documents at once so what you can do is that through the day you onboard many different customers and your authorized signatory can at one time sign up to 500 documents at once in the journey as well so we've chosen the settings so here i'll show you what the aadhar journey is like and i'll show you how this dsc token signing for your signatory can work and by default now you can be see that the signature placement of the document is on the bottom left corner you can move this around wherever you want you can keep this exactly like drawing a line so if you want to have it in an odd position in the middle wherever how many ever times you can have that and with one authentication all these different signatures uh, will appear on all across the document so if i've chosen all here then at that particular place the signature has now come throughout the document exactly in that position so this also increases your turnaround time significantly in your documentation journey at the same time in a document you may also want some signatures on some pages to be at a different position so that can also be done through the journey where on a particular page a signature is at a particular location whereas on all other pages it's at a particular location and all these coordinates can be saved through a one time configuration in fact everything that nayan has shown you till now needs to be run only once for a particular workflow that you have for say kyc and onboarding agreement and all the configurations that nayan has shown you till now can be saved with a single click and redeployed and automatically used for each customer and each subsequent customer that's correct so now that we've chosen the signature placements and we fixed what the workflow will be we just click on send and now the document has gone out for signing so you can see here that you have a ready made tracker so you can see three things from your account you can see one the document that you've sent for signing you can see two who you've sent the document for signing to and who's received it so you can see that nayan is active he's got it on his email once he signs it it will move to the second company and you can see that there is a tracker that is also ready so you can see invitation send at 427 once i will open the document it will get updated once i sign it so step by step you will be able to have a real time tracking of your documentation so now let's just take you through the aadhar flow so i'm just going to open my email correct so you can see that i have got an email invite here saying that so and so company has invited you to sign this loan agreement and that it will expire by so and so date so sorry i'm just going to mute everyone yeah so you can see that everybody is now uh got so now this is what it will look like you just click on sign and you can see that you also have this option that this invitation will expire by so and so date so you can fix by what time the invitation will expire this can be as low as 45 minutes it can be as high as 365 days as well so i've clicked on sign and i'm taken to a secure portal where as the first signatory i can see the document this is of course just a dummy stamp paper and i can see where my signature will appear what you will also note is that on the header of every single page of the document there is a unique document id which is printed this document id is reflected on the stamp paper and the stamp serial number is also reflected on the header so the stamp paper and the document are all clearly linked to each other so now as the first signer i have seen the document i have seen where my signature will appear and i go to proceed before i can go on i have to enter an otp so i first 
enter in my OTP. I give my consent term. This is important because what we are doing here is that we are recording the fact that the signer is voluntarily using his Aadhaar for this purpose. If you have any additional consent terms that your company or from a compliance point of view, you can input that in this space. So now I'm taken to the NSTL page where I'm asked to input my Aadhaar number. Now I've gotten an OTP on my Aadhaar linked uh, phone and on my Aadhaar linked email ID. Right, so I've got it instantly and so it's been done. Now my Aadhaar has been verified by NSTL. And now if I go back to the dashboard and I just click on refresh. So you can see that this entire trail has now appeared. It's recorded the fact when I opened the document, when the OTP was generated and when I signed it. And you can see on your document here now that there is an Aadhaar signature, which has now appeared. We'll see what this looks like in more detail. And now you can see that, okay, Nayan has signed it. It's moved on to the second person for signing. So now let me open the second email ID. And now when the second signer sees the document, they can see that one person has already signed it using Aadhaar. They can see where their signature will come. I click on proceed. And now again, I just have to enter the OTP once again. So now I'm just going to input my DSC token. So I inputted my DSC token, it read and I've selected my digital signature. So if you have an authorized signatory, so all your compliance documents, you know, your director appointment forms, your financial statements, you will have a director or some authorized signatory who signs it using this uh, uh, DSC token. So you can now use this to sign 500 documents at once on your system through legality. And that's it. So now the document has been completely signed. It's been signed by one signatory using Aadhaar, one signatory using DSC, and this is completely legally compliant, legally valid. It has been automatically stored on your account with us. You have been able to view it in real time tracking. And what has happened is that everybody who signed the document, your customer, your authorized signatory would have also gotten a copy of this document on their email. So you can see here that I have received a copy of the sample loan agreement that I just signed as well as an audit trail. So there is a verification of the signature that takes place when the document is being opened. This verification is done to do a check that the version of the document that was signed, whether it has been modified since the time of signing or not. So a digital signature also makes your documents tamper evident. So now if I just go down and this is what it will look like. So you can see there's a signature with the Aadhaar logo. It says the date and time when it was signed and the name of the person. And similarly, e signed using DSC, similarly date and timestamp as well. And now if I move to see what, and this has been 
replicated across all pages. So one time I do authentication and as many places, as many locations through the document, it gets signed instantly. And now if I have a sense of what this audit trail is that is stored in your system and keeps a record, it gives me details about the document, what stamp paper was used and it records that who sent it, who opened it, uh, when was the OTP generated. So you don't need to necessarily send this on email. You can send this to someone's mobile phone as well and they'll just get an SMS link. And in that case, the mobile number will get recorded. But all these details get captured. And what you can see, there is also some Aadhaar details. And I'm not worried about showing this because these are very masked Aadhaar or limited Aadhaar details. So you are only getting a sense of the signer's PIN code, the state, the gender. There are no greater details about Aadhaar. At no point in this journey is an Aadhaar number being stored or is anybody accessing the Aadhaar in a uh, illegitimate fashion. And then the consent term is also recorded that the person voluntarily agreed to use his Aadhaar for this process. And then same process for the second signatory as well. When was the OTP generated, verified, basic details of the digital signature. So that in a nutshell is the entire signing journey. And on your, if we're integrating this through your digital onboarding system, then all of this documentation will get automatically stored in your digital onboarding system uh, in the manner that you have programmed it for signing and programmed it for storage. Thanks, Diane. So beyond and above this layer, and I'm seeing a, a, a few questions actually in the chat and we'll address some of them after this about various configurations and types where multiple documents are signed together and uh, 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 different questions regarding stamping. So our system itself is extremely configurable and can support a wide variety of document workflows that are unique to your organization. Beyond just the signing layer, what Nayan just showed you was just a basic flow and how Aadhaar eSign as a technology works with a document workflow. Our solution itself has several advanced features that can actually be customized and help you customize your journeys as per your own unique document processes. So we have a set of deeper features that are available with legality. And subsequent to this webinar, we will be sharing with you the recording of this webinar in addition to a link. On that link, you can reach out to us and I'll reiterate this at the end of the webinar. You can reach out to us and we can give you access to a sandbox account where you can try out these features and try out these configurations yourself. The one that Nayan showed you in the webinar and deeper configurations that are available on the dashboard. Uh, so where exactly does legality now fit into your journey, right? So you've seen SEBI circular, you've seen uh, SEBI allowing Aadhaar eSign, you've seen legality as well, a basic Aadhaar eSign flow through legality. When you actually look at the width of the solution, legality can actually power all your documentation processes after the video KYC stage. So say you have a video KYC integrator and you perform the video KYC steps two to eight regarding all documentation, including filling up of the KYC form and filling up of your agreement form. All these steps can be powered through legality with a simple integration, either through your internal document processes or through your use of the dashboard. And the best part about the system is it can be integrated in a matter of days with no installation and no deep integration necessary. Right. So the process would be that uh, given the kind of semi circular that we were talking about, what can be done is that even the cropped signature or the image of the uh, customer's physical signature can also be automatically affixed during this journey. So you can do away with any printing, scanning at any point in the journey uh, and ensure that all that your customer has to do is that your customer can receive one consolidated document, which includes the 
uh, filled in KYC form with the crop signature. It includes any particular uh, ID proof that may be required at that stage. It may include any other particular booklets. Everything can be consolidated into one document. And so your customer only has to conduct, take out this one minute of his time to do this Aadhaar e-sign journey. And then all the documentation, all the ID proofs are instantly signed and attested as required. That is the key benefit of this digitization process. And when we talk about turnaround time, when we talk about creating business efficiencies, that is the sort of process and the kind of benefit that we're talking about. Sure. Thanks, Nayan. So I think, Nayan, we can address some of the questions of the audience. So I'll just uh, go through them and we can discuss the answers to them. Uh, so the first question is, ultimately, is the solution on cloud or can we have it on premises? Okay, so I'll just take that. So uh, we are, we unfortunately have some regulatory restriction when it comes to conducting the process on premise. So it is currently a completely cloud based uh, process. Our servers are hosted by Amazon Web Services and we have backup services, backup servers as well. Our servers are all based in Mumbai. And what the benefit of the cloud based process is also is that the ability to integrate and the ability to use our platform uh, becomes extremely easy. What we do provide is that in order to meet with our regulatory requirement, we have to keep certain documents on our system for a seven day period. So once the seven day period is over, you can delete the documents from our servers. You can delete it from the account that you have with us. And then you can ensure that it is stored only on your system, only on your server. As such, when we are integrating with your digital onboarding system or your management system, upon a customer signing the document, it can be saved automatically in your system as well. And we only have to keep it on our server for a seven day period. Right. So the next question, and I'm seeing a multiple questions on API integration and whether legality can integrate with processes. The simple answer is yes. Uh, there is documentation as well for our API, which is also available on our website, but it's also something we will share with you in a follow-up email to this webinar, where we'll also be sharing with you a recording of this webinar in addition to things like our API documentation and basic next steps you can follow. If you're interested in evaluating the use of legality and integrated, integrating it with your processes. So we have APIs that can be integrated in less than a week into all your digital assets. Uh, now the next question I'm seeing, and I'm seeing multiple of these questions. So I think we'll come to that is how, what is the relationship between legality in terms of a KUA license, whether you need a KUA license, whether how legality gets into KRA and CKYC records, right? So to answer these two questions in a uh, sort of one answer, uh, the short answer is that e-sign itself is not a KYC process. Uh, e-sign cannot replace your KYC verification. E-Sign is a mode of attestation and the E-Sign process itself does not actually use KYC data in the sense that the KYC data never passes to legality and never passes to you. It's a transaction between the customer NSDL and UIDAI. So ultimately uh, the issues of KUA licensing, uh, the issues of getting into CKYC records, do not arise with regard to the e-sign process. Uh, in respect to the KUA license specifically with NSDL, legality as an application service provider under the CCA framework is authorized to provide you e-sign services. We have the requisite licenses and partnerships with the KUA, which is NSDL, and you will not need to deal with that hassle at all. Uh, the next question um, is, will the KRA and CER SAI recognize such signed documents? Uh, the answer is yes, because section five of the IT act is quite explicit that digital signatures and electronic signatures can be used in lieu of wet signatures on a second level. SEBI itself has clarified in this circular that Aadhaar e-sign is specifically to be used in lieu of wet signatures 
and is the specified form of attestation for a digital onboarding process uh, so nayan the next question actually is regarding can this substitute a class 2 or class 3 signature so aditya that uh, question does not arise in this case because when we're talking about this aadhar e sign it is recognized under the it act as a specific form of electronic signature which falls under section 5 of the it act and is recognized as a kind of signature which can be used in place of wet signatures so when it comes to this kyc journey for sebi registered entities then this aadhar e sign can be very easily used for signing any investor forms any booklets any onboarding process and can be used to attest uh, documentation id proof as well as the kyc form so i think if we go down the process of okay there is a class 2 digital signature there is a class 3 digital signature is aadhar fitting into here or there then what we are doing is that we're going back to maybe 2001 2002 something and we're trying to look at an old framework aadhar is a new framework which is specifically recognized under the it act it's specifically recognized under the sebi circular and the question of uh comparing it with or trying to think about is this a class 2 or class 3 signature is not the right way to go about looking at this process right thanks dan uh, the next question um is about specifically multiple documents uh, being handled in the flow and can multiple separate documents be signed in a single signing workflow that's correct they can be so there are two ways to do this one is that at your end you've just merged all the different files into a single pdf and then you're uploading that pdf and sending it for signing so all the documents get signed at the same time uh, the second way to do it is that you have created a standard format or a template where again you've merged all your different booklets and your forms together and then you're again getting that signed and filled in at the same time Uh, so that is entirely possible in this workflow and in fact nayan i think uh, we've seen this with uh, several loan kits and several bfsi players um, including st- many stock brokers who do it for the same kyc process where they've actually consolidated an onboarding documentation kit into a single template and i that's, think yeah that's correct that's correct so this is a process that uh, we in fact conduct for our clients all the time uh, wherein we assist them in workflow design we assist them in template design and we ensure and that we can work with our client and devise a process that automates their signing journey as much as possible reduces the turnaround time and makes the experience as quick and seamless for the customer as possible and i'm seeing actually a follow up to this about merging of multiple documents in the same pdf increasing the size so legality does definitely help with the optimization one if you sign it through our templates the merging won't create any issues and even merging onboarding kits of even 50 to 70 pages or 100 pages is not an issue and legality has been used for this uh, with no delays in the signing flow due to the size of the pdf document uh, and i think another question follow up is coming regarding class 2 uh, class 2 not being required in our process uh, uh, meaning how the intermediary members sign Uh, so you can use a class 2 or class 3 dsc token if you want the intermediary members themselves to sign you can use a doc signer hsm certificate which also falls under those class categories for a sign but thirdly you can also use an aadhar e sign which under the it act framework does not fit into any class but as per section 5 explicitly can be used as a replacement for a wet ink signature requirement so again aadhar e sign is equally legal to the class 2 class 3 framework not fitting into any class yes, i uh, think uh, that's why if you look at the sevi circular it is talking about and it is phrasing it in terms of a clarification you know sevi is simply letting the cust- uh, the uh, its registered entities know that this process is also available under law it is clarifying and it is recognizing something which is already there under the it act and is simply letting them know that there is no issue with conducting or using aadhar e sign during this process 
SEBI is not creating uh, a new kind of law or is not giving some kind of recognition uh, to something which was not already there. In fact, I think there's a pot potential argument to have been made that even if SEBI had not issued that clarification, you could potentially have used Aadhaar eSign for signing these investor onboarding forms and booklets and so on. SEBI has just come out with a clarification to dispel any doubts or dispel any uncertainty right. that might be there. Right, right. And definitely we will be happy to answer your questions even subsequent to this webinar. Again, just reiterating, we will be sending you our contact coordinates where you can reach out to us. And if you have any specific questions regarding our organization's workflow, uh, coming to the next question uh, in terms of uh, 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 signing workflow, right? Nayan? So essentially in our demo, what we showed is an email being triggered to a customer for e-sign. Right. However, can this signing actually be done in real time? So hypothetically, I, am, I think this question is coming from this framework. If a customer is actually interacting with an intermediary on their digital platform, um, if they were, you know, in, and in KYC processes, it's not that, you know, they'll wait for an email. It's like they will upload their documents uh, directly onto the intermediary's platform. Is it possible for the signing link and the signing process to happen immediately after the customer simply uploads it within the digital ecosystem of the intermediary's platform itself without say an email or uh, something like that. That's correct. Because what is happening in the kind of flow that we showed in our basic flow is that a link is being sent to a signatory's email. But in terms of integration with an onboarding process, then the link can also be directed and worked through the digital onboarding system itself. So there would not be any requirement for the customer to go separately to an email ID or so on. That entire process and that entire flow can be done seamlessly during the KYC journey itself. Right, right, right. So the other question and uh, two questions actually regarding eSign. Uh, one is whether Aadhaar eSign is in compliance with UIDAI guidelines and whether there'll be any issues from that end. And the second question is whether in the SEBI process will a cropped sign on its own without eSign be considered valid. So on the first question, actually, um, Aadhaar based eSign is valid as per UIDAI guidelines because one, it is purely voluntarily. Two, no private entity actually receives access to the Aadhaar number or Aadhaar KYC data. It is purely being processed with NSDL, UIDI and the signer itself. So ultimately, and third, the Aadhaar has been providing support for actually the eSign API to function. And it has been functioning for the last three years and continues to function across the BFSI space. Um, on the second issue, Nayan, an interesting issue, and I think SEBI Circular itself, uh, I think, uh, is whether the crop sign that the SEBI Circular mentions can be submitted and be valid without the Aadhaar eSign being used to attest it? Uh, I would not think so. Because again, we would leave this up, of course, to the, to the specific legal and compliance departments to take a call. But I think from a very bare reading of the circular, what it, whenever it mentions cropped signature, it says cropped signature under eSign. So it is the wording of the circular seems to suggest that wherever the crop signature is being used, there is a requirement for a follow-up attestation using the Aadhaar eSign process. Right, right. Another question actually regarding the SEBI circular process is actually whether a video KYC is required for an existing bank and customer for a KRA KYC purpose while opening an investment DMAT account. So to be quite frank, we are not and we don't claim to be KYC experts. Um, so we would actually defer this to your internal legal teams and would not want to offer a certain answer on that. Uh, we step in after the KYC journey. And of course, if KYC is not required for a particular process, uh, then by all means, uh, you know, you can directly use legality uh, without doing the KYC. If KYC is required, legality can of course integrate with your system in a way that right after KYC is performed, legality kicks in and powers the rest of the journey. So I think there are two outstanding questions uh, that are still pending now uh, and maybe we can end with this. Uh, one question is regarding stamp duty and the stamping solution. Uh, regarding one, 
whether legality will actually recommend what stamp duty needs to be paid for an agreement and two what articles of the stamp act and what states do does legality support its stamping feature for i mean does legality service its stamp stamping feature okay so, so i'll take that in reverse so firstly uh, as such legality's network of stamping is pan india and we would not keep a restriction on what specific articles or so on uh, however during this lockdown it is to be maintained and understood that the situation across different states is very dynamic so perhaps this week in certain states certain kinds of stamp papers are more easily available whereas in other states you know some other sorts of other kinds of stamp papers are available so in normal circumstances there's no restriction it's pan india all articles of the stamp schedule uh, are available but when it's coming to the covid lockdown because the dynamic situation we are assessing it day by day week by week and we are keeping our clients in the loop and answering all questions that are required um in terms of the question of do we advise on stamp duty uh no no because i think that is ultimately a legal question and we would not want to step in and promise you some sort of legal certainty or legal advice on the stamp duty uh you know we're happy to work with your legal team and explain our stamping process to them let them know how we do our stamping um but in terms of what the exact stamp duty amount is that would be a question that we would not intrude into because we are the intermediary uh in this process and ultimately legal advice yes that ties into another question asked about stamping on 6 months validity of stamp papers so ultimately that would be up to your legal evaluation because there are some schools of thought that hold that it's not 6 month validity but merely a 6 month validity of refund of stamp papers so the stamp paper validity itself doesn't expire but again we would defer to your internal legal teams evaluation uh, on that uh yeah i, I think the I, i guess the key point to be made when it comes to stamping is that you know we will ultimately do whatever call it is that your legal team has taken or the call that you are comfortable with if you are telling us that right so uh, yeah yeah exactly 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 so nayan i think we are running out of time and we don't want to keep other people so we'll just end with uh, the last question um and i'm sorry if some questions haven't been answered but we'll definitely strive to answer them in a subsequent email with the recording and we will also drop our contact details and they've already been dropped in the chat but we will also send it by email in case you have any questions that were left unanswered by this webinar uh the question is one a small one of whether this works only with a customer having a mobile link to an aadhar uh the answer is yes the customer will need to have an aadhar linked phone um if they are paying uh, tax i mean for hni investors investors usually they would be paying uh, they would be using their aadhar otp flow for tax returns flows as well so it is very likely that they would have actually have aadhar linked and that's never been an issue that we've seen from all profiles of customers that our clients get aadhar e signs from um and I the think, next question yeah the yeah, next question to, is uh, sorry nayan so i think just to add on to that is that the otp is going to be sent to the aadhar linked phone and the aadhar link email so it may be that you know even if uh, the access to the phone for whichever reason is not there as long as they have access to the email id they will still be able to get an otp there right 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 so nayan i think uh, we can end the uh, meeting there if you can just uh, unmute uh, pritesh as well um in the participants tab um so while we're ending the meeting uh, just wanted to say thank you all for coming on a saturday at such short notice i hope the webinar demo and webinar were helpful to you uh we will send you a follow up with the recording also with our contact details meanwhile if you're interested in checking us out you can also visit legality.com and you can also visit the contact link sent in the zoom chat but again we will also be sending you ways in which you can reach us and explore whether legality can help your organization in some way um again wanted to thank uh, pritesh as well uh, hi for... everyone uh, thanks nayan aditya and siddhant for such a wonderful uh, webinar and i'm sure with sebi paving the way for e signing of documents uh, legality and the platform which you are providing will really help the mutual fund industry thank you very much thanks so much pradesh and thanks so much for pushing us to host this uh, 
so really appreciate it uh, so again thank you all uh, we will be reaching out to you soon um, through an email with a video recording and our contact details but meanwhile you can also visit legality.com to reach out to us directly and take a conversation forward on whether legality can actually help your organization in leveraging the benefits of aadhar e sign for digital onboarding i uh, want to thank pratesh again for pushing us for this want to thank nayan for hosting and conducting the webinar and want to th thank siddhant from for answering questions in the chat window uh, so thank you all and uh, hope to see you again in a future webinar uh, clarifying other aspects of digital documentation wonderful thank you thank, thank you. you so much everyone thank you again thanks